Henry. It's the coach. And we come to you from one of the truly iconic stadiums in the NFL. Two teams here fresh off week one victories who can keep it going as we're underway on EA Sports. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. So here's the Viking offense making their way out. And trotting out there, their tall quarterback standing at 6'5". It's pretty much become the norm when we see guys come out before a game and go through the route tree with their receivers. I thought it was exciting for us to see the exact same thing happen in practice. He's, not, so, he's so meticulous, isn't he? He really is, and it's not. that told me it's not just a one-time-a-week thing. They work on it all the time, trying to hone that fine edge. They want to see if they can get in sync and stay in sync in this one. Jet sweep to start the drive. And a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. I like the idea to mix it up from time to time because, let's face it, you can't be predictable. But the execution was a little lacking on this one, right? They might want to go back to the drawing board with that call. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. Here we go on second and 12. And Cook has it, left side. Give him seven on the play, and they're going to face a third down. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. Back to throw here. And he's able to find Diggs. And he'll be tackled right on the chalk of the 45. He'll get 15 and a Vikings first down. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Kick the out, Watch the run. They're running it. Watch the safety creep. Now the first carry for Dalvin Cook. And he'll be taken down just shy of midfield after a gain of about four. The starter's now on offense, and Stefan Diggs, our first chance to see him today. Brandon, remember we had this conversation about how highly recruited he was in high school? Didn't quite live up to it in college due to some injuries, but boy, has he hit the NFL like a bomb. Stefan Diggs, a crafty, mature route runner who can go the distance. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. That backs him up one yard and brings up third down. An interesting and intriguing decision there defensively because they kept extra DBs on the field despite seeing the multiple tight end look that came out for the offense. I thought they were going to switch out of it. I didn't know if they felt they didn't have time or what the case was. Well, in any event, the extra speed allowed for great penetration as they stuffed that one behind the line of scrimmage. They'll look to throw. Oh, he almost picked it. Nearly a turnover there on their opening drive. And that's a throw he'd like to have back. Now fourth down. Not the opening possession they were looking for, especially on the road. No doubt about it, because they wanted to come out and establish a little momentum right away. But now bringing up a fourth down, an empty possession, not what they were seeking. On fourth down, out is the punter Cameron Johnston to boot it away. Back deep, Jakeem Grant. He punted five times in the win last week as this one's away. So here comes the Packers offense now onto the field. They'll be led out by the second tallest quarterback in league history at six foot seven inches. It's Brock Osweiler. I saw Brock Osweiler throw in a practice session while he was in college, and it's never left me the memory of how smooth he was throwing the ball, how accurate he was, and what a catchable ball he threw. 
A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. A boost here to start the drive. After the penalty, it's first and five. They will run with Grant. And oh, right away, he lost the football. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. From the 26, they'll line up on second and four. Here's Grant. And he's taken down, but able to slip across the 35. 12 yards there and a first down. How best to describe that one? I'd say right down Broadway on that run. A straight ahead running. I think that that might be something we see a lot of between the tackles today. Well, he's enjoying things so far here this afternoon. Sees a crease and bursts through it for a solid game. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now a first carry for Derrick Henry. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. They'll wind up losing four yards on the play. And that's going to make it second and 14. Moving backwards on first down, never a good thing. What does that do for the mindset on second down? Well, it changes your play call, definitely, because as a play call, you're advancing yourself, thinking, okay, we're going to get a gain here. Now you've got to go back in reverse, come up with something to pick up not just the yardage lost, but gain a few extra. successfully that doesn't talk about having an attitude to be a running football team right you gotta be able to put your nose in there smell where the first down sticks are and get there from midfield now here's Osweiler over the middle and complete to the tight end Higby and yeah, he's gonna get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard the numbers for him from a week ago nine catches 61 yards Better tighten up the coverage if you expect to slow this guy down because if he gets going, he'll eat you up. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. They're piecing together a nice drive to start this one. Seems pretty scripted and pretty successful so far. And I think they did it without our help. Because you remember when we sat in with the, in the production meeting with them to talk about this and, hey, you know, how are you guys going to come out of the gate? I know I offered my help with a few plays, and they didn't seem I, to I want didn't it. Offer mine. You, know, you, were, you were the smart one. Whatever they're doing, though, it's working really well. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. Bryant with a catch right side. And he'll be brought down at the 21, just shy of the 20 in the red zone. The completion good for three, and it's second down. And this offensive unit should have a lot of juice coming off the big output that they had one week ago. Nothing like confidence, is there? When you've played well the week before, you can't wait to get back on the field and do it again. On second and seven, Osweiler. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. I don't think it's a surprise they're throwing the football early. We expected that. They told us they were going to come out. And he will get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. Derrick Henry, his second touchdown on the season. And they are able to strike first here on their opening drive. They scored the most points of anyone on opening weekend, and now first quarter touchdown here. And while there's no guarantee that all the points they scored in opening weekend are going to hold up and be the average all year long, 
They're certainly starting to set that type of a pace. And what you do with that is you put in the heads of all of your opponents. We've got to really be ready on defense because these guys know how to put the ball in the end zone. You think they can keep piling on the points like this? I think they can if they're prepared to adjust and adapt because they won't see the same defense as week in and week out. Extra point right down the middle. And it's now a 7-0 game. So the drive goes 75 yards, 10 plays. And Derrick Henry able to finish it off with a touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. And now out comes Minnesota. And hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. And all the way down to the 29. A big play there on the catch and run. 46 yards. It's not a surprise when you read scouting reports and watch tape because you know he's a heck of a player. But he is so difficult to get down in the open field. They just want to get him the ball and let him do his thing. So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Throw left side on target to Thielen. The excellent play last time is followed by a much more routine gain of three. We'll take a look at the starters here defensively for the Packers. They were quite formidable in the win over the Eagles a week ago. I don't know what the actual percentages are. I don't know the analytics on when you create five turnovers or takeaways in a game. But coaches have always told me, when you create a number that high, your chances of winning, probably up over 98%. Here's a second and seven. Looking for Diggs, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the free safety, Eric Berry. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. First interception he's thrown on the season. New town, new receivers, still probably trying to get in sync with everyone. And you just know that he's not going to say, hey, I'm just getting started with these guys. We're still working on it. But there definitely is an element to it. I don't care how many OTAs, how many mini camps, preseason, there's nothing like game speed. They're still working up to it. And we spotlight Derrick Henry now. A tough challenge here in this one. We'll see if he can duplicate the numbers on your screen that he put up last week, up over 100 and a touchdown. When we're watching Ready? tape to prepare for this game. One thing you noted that I totally agree with, great complimentary piece in the last game. You know, they're able to throw it pretty well. He ran it exceptionally, and they hope to continue that same formula in this game. Complimentary with an E, not an I. That's my English teacher right there. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. 16 yards right off the bat on a first down. Well, partner, for a few years there, we thought this read option play was going to take over the whole NFL. It seemed like everyone was using it. But it has been scaled back considerably in the last few seasons, mainly because people worried about their quarterbacks getting hit. But when you call it at the right time and you use it properly, you see the type of gains you can get. A nice chunk of yardage there by the quarterback. A first down carry for Henry. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. On second and very short, Osweiler throwing the out route incomplete. It's Bryant. Six yards the pickup, and that's a first down. They go play action here on first down. This is caught by Antonio Brown. And he'll be taken down across the 50 at the 45 in enemy territory. 13 yards, first down Packers. Now a play fake here on first down. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. Time for a look at our starters here on defense. Well, they come in a top 10 unit against the pass, currently eighth in the NFL. And hey, they were stingy in the opener. Didn't allow much of anything at all through the air. So now they come into week two saying, hey, let's see if we can do even better. Let's go ahead and get to that number one spot. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. Two. 
Draw play. This is Henry. And they see right through that defensively as he'll be hit and taken down to the backfield. That'll wind up going for a loss of four. And that's going to bring up a third down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. Out of the gun, it's Osweiler. And he fires one, but incomplete. Certainly looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. On now is the Packers punter, as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. He was called on three times in the win last week as his first one here's away. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And this is a unit that, to be frank, doesn't look like they've woken up yet. I mean, a punt and a turnover on their first two drives. And I think the game's starting to take shape a little bit now. And I'm going to take it into the basketball world. When you're having trouble scoring or moving the ball in basketball, what do they do? Get it to their best player, right? Find a matchup, create it, exploit it, and try to move the football. And he'll be upended after a gain of five up to the 25-yard line. Here's a second and five now from the 25. Uh, give to Cook out of the gun. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. They'll run it. Here's Cook. And he's able to get it to the 31, and that's enough for the first. I know the game's changed. A lot of people would say it's evolved. Look, I'm a little bit Neanderthal, okay? I love this. No exotic formations, no misdirection. Just line up and run the darn ball, pick up the first down. I love it. Yeah, third and short, that's what you're supposed to do. Like you said, old school smash mouth football. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. They'll drop the throw. Over the middle complete. It's Thornton. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 17 yards, first down, Vikings. I know many people like to throw to the tight end, maybe in a little flexed out position because he creates mismatches with his size. But slot receivers do the same thing with their quickness, their speed, and their route running savvy. Got it. 56, by 56. Only the wider team showing up. And on play action, they'll throw. Packer pressure, and down he goes. These strong safeties, some people may not realize it, it's really like an extra linebacker, right? It really is, because they're hybrids. Half linebacker, half defensive back. The linebacker in him on that play emerged. Certainly going to need to be a bit better here on second and 16. Let's get off the field. Second and long. He's got the connection over the middle to Diggs. That catch good for five. It's third down. He'll look to throw. He's got the first down and more inside the 40. And this is going to result in another first down as the tackle's made at the Packers 33. Well, this is how you shape the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw 10 interceptions in a row, I'm going to stay confident and keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10. Down at the 33. He'll look to throw. And Rudolph has it. The tight end. That throw good for four. It's second down. Four yards on that last completion. So that sets up second and six. Now a run with Cook. 
And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 11 yards there, first down. Usually we see runs like this as the defense breaks down later in the game, but this guy is setting the tone early, running through all types of tackles and putting the defense back on its heels. Following the good run by Cook, here's another first and ten. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Now back to throw. I can't help it. Every time I see Eric Berry make a... And Rudolph has got it. The big tight end for a Viking touchdown. Kyle Rudolph, his first touchdown of the new season as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to drop those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough. They couldn't handle it. They worked out for six. Extra point by Badgley, up and good. And we are tied at seven. So that one a long 11-play drive. And it's polished off by a Viking score. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. This one fielded at the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trade expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the... Now the ball's out. Osweiler lost it. Seven, seven, our score after one. Back for the second quarter in Green Bay. It's the Packers in possession of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Quarterback, don't get nervous, now. We begin to turn you up. On first down, Henry. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. On second down, it's Henry. And they'll get this just to the 47. One yard gain. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. That catch, by the way, kind of noteworthy. It's number 764 in his career. Ties him with Hall of Famer James Lofton. And he's done it just as James Lofton did in his career. Smooth. They run on first down as they get about three. Second and seven, forthcoming. Tackle made by Eric Kendricks. From the 38, Osweiler. Now left side here to Bryant. And he's going to get this inside the 30. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 27-yard line. Osweiler now nearly perfect. 9 of 10 in this first half. It's first and 10. They run on first down, but it only produces a gain of 2. It's second down now. 2 yards on the pick up there. It'll be second and 8. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping 
Those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. And they work this near the five. He'll be stopped at the six. 19 yards to pick up there. Move the chains. Off the play fade. Here's Osweiler. The quick slant caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one yard line. That'll bring up second and goal after the gain of five. And a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker. And you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest win. And he'll take this one in for a Packer touchdown. Derrick Henry with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Packers have taken the lead. And always a good first half when you can hit pay dirt twice. And it never hurts to have that good feeling as the game moves on. Just think about halftime. If, if that's is all he gets, he'll just sit there at the half and think, all right, two already. I can get some more. I can get some more. And he'll be encouraging his offensive line to create some space. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken at his four. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. Now here's the signal caller getting ready to lead this offense again. He's had a solid start to this game, but bottom line is they're losing, so he doesn't care about his stats. He just wants to write the ship on the scoreboard. He wants to actually increase his stats because he feels like if he does, that means things will get better. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. The sack by Robert Quinn. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. And the job becomes twice as difficult now. After the sack, it's second and 20. They run. Cook. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. And they only get a yard back there. They'll be left with a third down and long. Back to throw. Going right side here, and that's complete. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Give him 19 on the play, but they will still come up a bit short. And now it's fourth down. Boy, they had a lot of real estate to make up there, but what a big-time play for them. Nice completion, excellent game. Now they're in fourth and manageable. Just a little short, though, with that marker. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. The Green Bay offense now about ready to take possession here. And that last drive was very, very balanced, pretty methodical. You think they go that route again? I'm always of the school that until they stop me from doing something, I'm going to continue. And I think that that's exactly what they'll look to do. But the beauty is the balance that they've created sets up opportunities for big plays. Looks like a run, turn it into a play action, and throw one deep. On second and nine. Osweiler, it's complete to Brown, right side. A gain there of 21 yards. A good grab there by the former Central Michigan man, Antonio Brown. And he ate up some real estate on the catch, too, didn't he? I think the most impressive part of it, though, if there's a chance for him to get the football, even though he was covered well, he somehow finds a way to get it. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. On second and seven, Osweiler looking left side and he's got a man. That's Bryant. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 39. 
Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. And he's going to get this inside the 30. 12 more yards there and another first down. I like watching the wide receiver screen because it's a real teamwork play. Because guess what? The guy catching the ball, he'll get all the credit. But how about the people up to block in front of him? Either fellow receivers or offensive linemen. That makes that play a really nice timing play. And sometimes it can break big. He's able to get six. A nice pickup down to the 21. And two stops. Play action. It's Osweiler. And he's got it. It's caught for a Packers touchdown. Antonio Brown, his second touchdown on the season. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. Good start to the season for him. He had the touchdown last week in the opener and a second one in week two now. How about the pace he's already established, right? Not sure he can keep it up for an entire season, but don't burst the bubble because he thinks that he can. Do guys go into a season with a goal for touchdown scored or yardage? What do you think? I think every single one of the guys who's going to touch the football, they all have those types of goals. They all have those types of thoughts. And then they just have to see how the season unfolds if they can stay with it. Unfolding so far so good for him. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked Go to somewhere. someone else. And maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. And the stop here will come at the 38-yard line. Seven yards there and a first down. First down, here's the run with Cook. And he'll take this one down to the 36. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. The play action fake, they'll look to throw. He'll find Thielen working the middle. And he'll be upended at the 33, following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Out of the gun now on third down. And complete right side to Cook. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. And just in general, Charles, on a play like that, how tough is it for the defense to account for a running back essentially being a receiver downfield? It's very difficult, especially if the running back has skills like a receiver, and you're aware of that before the game even begins. So throughout your practice sessions, you're going to want to be aware of him. Where is he lining up? What can he do? What kind of damage can he do to us downfield? And who can match up with him? without weakening our overall defense. You're exactly right. It's a tough task to match up to him. The second down play, not much better than the first. Just a gain of one there. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Didn't have a receiver open downfield, and as it turned out, couldn't even find his outlet, man, because of the coverage. It's way too tight. Unable to find anyone open. Badgley's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So the field goal there caps what winds up to be an 11-play drive. Well, partner, that's a lot of offense to run there to only get three points. So I just wonder 
Are they going to recycle those plays because they were successful in getting three? Or do you go to another section of the playbook trying to find ones that get you into the end zone and get you six? Derrick Henry trots back out there and gets ready to go. We're in the second quarter. They've got the lead. The lead, though, not so much because of the ground game, because of their air attack, Charles. So what they're seeing so far is the possibility of things loosening up later in the ground game. Through the air first, maybe they have to start respecting that even more as the game goes on, and then there will be running lanes to find later. Yeah, try to get him more involved here on this drive, maybe. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Derek Henry. Anthony Barr in on the tackle. That didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. From the 36, Osweiler over the middle here to Brown. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. He's exceeded his receiving yards from a week ago, and we're still in the first half. It's a first down. They'll run on first down. It's Henry, and he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. 158 left to play till we hit halftime. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll head to Orlando. Standing by there, Jonathan Coachman. He'll have stats and scores from around the NFL in his second week of the regular season. And now this pass brought in by Brown. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 42. Osweiler now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. Now throwing on first down and completing it. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible. Hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. Throwing again on second down. Osweiler, and that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you can go make a play on the football. And he's able to pick up the first before he's taken down at the 27. They'll throw on first down with Osweiler. And he's going to be taken down back around the 35-yard line. Oh, my goodness. Was that a defensive back that got to him with the pressure? <laughs> oh, look at the former defensive back. You're, you're all smiles up here. I hope everybody can hear my smile on that play. So second and long, and got to be careful not to fall out of field goal range. to throw is Osweiler. And that's going to be incomplete. Too tough to hold on to that one. It's second down. It's a lot of contact going on there. And in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. Here's Osweiler to throw. And they're going to try the screen. It's complete. So now the Packers turn things over to the special teams crew. They're on for the field goal try. From the left hash, this from 53 yards. And okay, so much for our halftime break. Apparently we're going to get right back to it. So it's the Packers set to receive the kick. They've got the lead as well as we are underway in the third quarter. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The Packer offense ready to get their next drive underway. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys. But be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Four yards the pick up, first down. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Now it's Henry. Darius Phylon there on the tackle. 
But he's looking for some running room, and there wasn't a whole lot of it there on that play. I think he was lucky to get a couple yards out of it. Because those defenders, they were rallying to the football pretty quickly. Throwing on second and eight. Osweiler. And Bryant's got it over the middle. And he'll be stopped right at midfield. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. A loss of two there, second down. And plays like that are exactly what this defense needs here early in the second half to give it a little spark. I think their halftime adjustments, what they talked about, maybe it's just a little inspirational speech. Who knows? But looks like they're ready to go. On second and 12, Osweiler. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Picked off by Justin Coleman. And a terrific return as he takes this thing all the way down near the 20-yard line. First possession of the third quarter, an interception, so maybe a second-half tone setter. Indeed, and not the tone they wanted to set. That's the equivalent of running out the wrong door and running into your pool instead of running out onto the field. A real dud for that one. Has that happened to you before? No, but I've heard stories about teams actually doing that back in the good old days. On first down, Cook. And he's got four down inside the 20 to the 18. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. A tenth carry in the game for Cook. Cook with a first down and much more. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Delvin Cook, his first touchdown here of the new campaign as his guys are back within a single score. I know we don't talk about it enough, but the intelligence level of the guys up front blocking, the offensive linemen, maybe the smartest guys in football overall. Add in a little bit of athleticism and a whole lot of toughness, you've got a lot to deal with, don't you? That's why the guys in the backfield get them really nice Christmas gifts, right? If they're smart, they do. Following the touchdown, Badgley out there to kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. They'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. About set to get this drive started. The Green Bay offense at the line. And following the interception, just any... Interception. Are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive, or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. On second and 12, Osweiler throwing the out route and complete. It's Brown. And the offense moving quickly to the line. Osweiler now to throw on third down. And he will not be able to hang on through the contact. It's incomplete. The coverage strong, and now it's fourth down. You hear the calls for a penalty, but I just don't think so. I think in this situation, the defender was making sure his guy couldn't hold on to the football. So I don't see anything to warrant you to flag. No, I'm with you. There was contact, but... I'm happy they kept that flag in the back pocket. And now out comes Minnesota. On the set. Here's Cook as they begin on the ground. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. Running the jet sweep. This is Thielen with it. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. 
it's no accident they've been moving the ball well all game long. This offensive line has done an excellent job adapting to everything the defense is throwing at them and creating holes for their runners. No room to be had there on the first down run as he's lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. And the Packers give him nowhere to go, and they bring him down. Robert Quinn in there for the sack, and it's an important one from a personal standpoint as that is sack number 100 in what has certainly been a terrific career to this point. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He's got it complete to Diggs, right side. And it's a 15-yard pickup, but it'll lead to a fourth down. Receivers love having the reputation of being go-to guys on third down. And he was fighting like he really wanted to have that reputation, didn't he? I mean, he came very close to making that a first down. Broke the one tackle, but couldn't spring himself free. So they'll play the field position game here as a very nice punt is going to pin him back. Yeah, it's almost like watching a game of tennis, or do you prefer ping pong, you know, back and forth like that? That definitely was excellent, wasn't it? They'll start on the ground. It's Derrick Henry. And they'll get him down up past the 15, just shy of the 20. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. Now, this is an example of breaking down a defense because on a lot of these runs, he's getting past the point of attack, and guess what he's doing? Forcing the secondary guys to have to make a lot of tackles. They'll run on first down. It's Grant. This will be a short gain of three before he's brought down at the 22. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. To win any route, you've got to break down the defender, and that's exactly what happened here on this really nicely executed curl route. Osweiler now. Five straight completions here in this second half. First and ten. They're going to be stopped up on this first down run. He might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage, but that's it. He's already fumbled once in this game, and I thought the ball started to jostle there a little bit, but they got to him quickly at the line of scrimmage. They sure did, and remember, if you're not a very confident runner and you've already dropped it once, if there's trap, a fight for the football, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the former first-rounder, Jimmy Ward. And his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and 10. An excellent pickup of 34 yards. I know we love our jobs, and pretty much any play we see, we're pretty, you know, excited about. But big plays, let's face it, that's what we absolutely live for. How about that? One? That was great. And what our camera missed was the fist pump from the sideline after that catch. They're fired out. That's a big game. He'll wind up losing a yard on the play, and that'll bring up a second and 11. Double this guy has to be a priority before moving up to the next level because the big fella, he just ate that one alive, just stuffed it. In fact, before the game, he was talking to us, and he's like, hey, these pants make me look fat. And we said, nah, man, he's just a whole lot of guy. He is a well over 300 pounds. He's a big man. And they'll get to him short of the first down at about the 16. They get seven there, but it brings up fourth. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up, keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point, piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. But kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. They begin with Henry. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. Vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. Osweiler now perfect since the second half started. 7-7. Seven seven. It's first and 10. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. 
picked off by the linebacker, Eric Kendricks. And he's able to get it back to the 33-yard line. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. A toss to Cook. And this play will be blown up. He'll lose yardage back at the 38. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Left side caught by Diggs. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. That one good for a first down pickup of 18 yards. On first down, Cook. And he's only going to get a yard from the 20 to the 19. Here's second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Second and nine now. This will be caught inside the 10. Well, they obviously read man coverage there, partner. He got downfield, broke down the defender, made him think. By that yeah, he made him think he was going to run a different route. Probably thought he was going to take it upfield. Then it curls back inside for the completion. Now a throw to the end zone on first down, but it winds up incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver. But it'll be second and goal. Nothing on first down, so the ball remains at the eight-yard line, second and goal. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. And a movement there coming from the middle of the line. And you understand he wants to get off the ball quickly, but the ball is right in front of him. He has to watch it move first. Cook following the penalty. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. Make it now three tackles for a loss in this game, one for each quarter. And for a guy who played defense in college, I can just tell you that he's feeling very satisfied right now by what he's doing, but he's elated because he knows what he's doing is helping his team win the game right now, making some big-time plays, getting into the offense's backfield and spilling everything. A four-yard pickup, not enough. Fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before. So it's his third field goal now with a ball game, and they've needed his leg. This last one gives him the lead. It's been a back and forth kind of a game, hasn't it? Now you got to tell your defense, guys, need you to make this stand up because we got the momentum going in the right direction, but we need you to make sure we carry it home. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. They had that lead that is now gone. It is completely gone. Yeah, how does that affect the psyche? Or am I reading into that too much? They should be okay still? No, you're not reading into it too much at all. You've got to wonder what the psyche is of the team because once you build up a lead and things are rolling pretty well, you don't expect it to change. And for it to change this dramatically, and now they're the team doing the chasing, yeah, you want to check out where they are mentally and whether or not they have it in them to come back. We'll soon find out. Yeah, they're on their heels a bit right now. The catch and run, good for 18 and a first down. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. Henry. He'll get about three as he's brought down right around the 42. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. They'll run it again with Henry. That's going to be a six-yard gain. It leaves him with third down and just a yard to go. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. On third down, Henry. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. They only get two there, but on third and one, that's all they needed to keep the drive going. From midfield now, here's Osweiler. This one to the left to Higby. And he'll get nothing out of that one. No gain there on the completion. Second and ten. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Back now at Lambeau. This one's still anybody's ball game. It's a one-point difference here as we begin the fourth quarter of play. 
Now a man open down the middle of the field. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. 22 yards there, a first down. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. From the gun, it's Osweiler. And he's caught at the seven. And they are able to stop him, but he does take it all the way to the two. That's back-to-back -back plays of over 20 yards. And that last reception puts him over 150 yards now on the game, Charles. And now it's not just execution. It's not just performance. It's a mental aspect that's going on. Because right now, he's got the defense so much on their heels. Got them looking at each other. Who's going to cover this guy? And what type of coverage can we put out there to try and slow him down? Touchdown, Packers! Tyler Higby! His first touchdown of the new season. And once again, the Packers, they're back out in front. Yeah, he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. And this one's caught. And their fourth quarter lead grows by a couple more. And, of course, on the two-point try, had the option to run or pass. They pass it there, and it works. Felt pretty straightforward, didn't it? An open receiver. Ball's put on him. Two points for them. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The offense back out there at the line, ready for their next drive. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember they did put points on the board. Three points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Second and 11. And he's got his favorite target yet again. It's complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give them 14 on that one and a first down. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it. So it's not that big of a deal to me. And I'm going to keep firing. The extra effort after the catch makes it good. He'll look to throw. Going to throw right side here, complete. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. That's over 40 yards of movement with those last two plays. The drive continues as they search for a tying touchdown. Here's first and ten. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. That's going to be caught at the ten-yard line. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it to combined 33 yards. It's been all passing all the time on this drive. Five for five, and now first and goal. Feels like a case of until they stop us, we might as well keep running the offense that we like to run. Don't change up and do something different just because you think you need to. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. Under pressure, down he goes. Sacked at the 10. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. I got, I got. 
They'll run it now out of the gun. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. You got to think this is likely four-down territory anyway, but they'll try to punch it in now on third and goal. Now back to throw. To the goal line, but it's incomplete. Interception number one on his career. You're saying that's going into the trophy case? I'd put it there. Yeah, no doubt about it. That's when you ask the equipment guys to make sure they hold it for you after the game. But if you play in the back seven on defense, that's part of your job, finding ways to take the ball away from the other team. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple weeks. Oh, that's a perfect word for it, precise, because if you're at 70% or better, Two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want one in this league, won't you? I mean, let's face it's not just West Coast offense either. He's putting the ball downfield as well. Now, obviously, that's some good work there defensively, being able to stop them and bring it up a key third down. But if you're on the offensive side of the ball, there's an opportunity, because I know what defensive guys are thinking right now, to stop them, get to the ball. That means they might not be sound defensively. There could be some opportunities. And you said key third down. Highlight that word. Put it in bold. Here we go. They were looking for a cushion from that end zone. He gave it to them. 15 big yards. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly face mask. looked like it. Indeed, Defense. here come the flags. Boy, tight game like this. Fourth quarter, personal foul penalties, a no-no. Yeah, we know the emotions are running high. The tensions are the same. Who can control them best could ultimately win it. Now Osweiler. Higby secures it over the middle. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that'll make it second down. Another nice pickup through the air, and I think a lot of people might expect him to run the ball in this situation, Brandon, but with this lead, they're electing to throw the football. Swing, slant, quick out, things that they consider safe. Here's a quick hitch route, and the throw complete, and he'll get it out to midfield. Let's see, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. Seven yards there and a first down. They'll run on first down. Grant, and he's got it across the midfield strike and into Viking territory. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. From just shy of midfield, Osweiler. Man open left side is Brown. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings' 24-yard line. On first down, Osweiler. Oh, there's that man again. It's complete. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. That's complete. Right around the end. And we'll get this into the end zone. Touchdown, Green Bay. John Ross, his first touchdown here of the new campaign. And the Packers are able to stretch that lead out further. And on this play, he just made a great... Now the extra point try forthcoming. And the lead is up to 14. So that drive, 80 yards, nine plays. And it ends with a Packers touchdown. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. 
And he'll take this across the 25. Couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. With his guys trailing here in the fourth, he can ill afford a repeat of the interception that ended the last drive. Yeah, you two scores down. You take it upon yourself now to play perfect or near-perfect football if you want to get your team back into the game. But it's also tough to do when you're trying to avoid errors yet still play perfect football. A nice-looking play to start the drive down the middle and complete. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. So into Packer territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 47. They'll look to throw here. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Thornton. Another good completion on the drive as the Vikings have a first down. On first down, he'll drop to throw. And his throw here is incomplete. He was looking for Adam Thielen there. But it's going to be second down. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Second and 10. And he comes back with one complete. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. Now they'll try to convert on third and six after the four-yard completion. They'll set up the throw. Now a loose football. The ball comes out, and the Packers pick it up. And they're going to take over right there at the 22-yard line. Brandon, I don't want to violate any of our broadcasting rules by declaring a game over before it's over. But that one, that puts them in real jeopardy there. Absolutely. It was a two-possession game. It is a two-possession game at this stage in the fourth. They needed points out of that drive. And obviously now, no chance at all to get those points that they so desperately needed. And Green Bay getting ready to go as they take the field. Well, there are two scores on the plus side. Still time here in this fourth quarter, but maybe you start thinking about playing keep away? Yeah, I think here's the situation. You're not thinking touchdowns anymore. You're just thinking first downs to keep up with your theme there playing keep away. First downs, they can't touch the ball. They're throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Here's Osweiler to throw. Throwing the out route incomplete. It's Brown. That throw good for only a couple. It brings up third down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. And they're left looking at third and eight after the second down pass play only went for two. Out of the gun, it's Osweiler. He gets it to Brown, good play. And down he goes, but he takes it up to the 40. His big day receiving just keeps getting bigger. He's over 200 yards now in the afternoon. And on that last play there, he's over 400 yards passing now. You know what that generally means? Success. <laughs> yeah, that, and it means you really didn't miss opportunities. Usually very accurate. The ball's getting to the right place. Guys are making yardage after the catch to help you out that way. I mean, the whole team has picked it up. And don't forget, that means the offensive line has had to pass protect pretty well, too. Yeah, everyone dialed in. Pretty solid run here on first down. Almost picked up another first, but he appears to be a few inches short. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old-school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. down. It's Henry. Pushing his way through. And he's got this down to the 35. A 14-yard gain there as they look to improve this 14-point lead. But that looked like an example of what you said back in the first half. A running back of his size can really wear down a defense. I think he's starting to do that. I think you're exactly right. And know what else he's doing? He's inspiring the rest of his team. Because they see this starting to happen as well. 
So that means they're going to redouble their efforts to help him out. Extra blocking, getting downfield, helping him out. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll run with Henry. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this. Now the ball's out. Osweiler lost it, and the Vikings pick up the football. And they will set up shop at their own 41-yard line. Partner, that one looked like it was over. I mean, they had control, had the football, and the defense had to make a play in order to keep them in the game. That's exactly what they did. And now that door ajar, two-score game, so hold on here, not done in the fourth. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. And last time, the turnover on the fumble, and they were in enemy territory, so that had to be very frustrating. Down on the scoreboard here, can't do it again. You nailed every part of what was frustrating. <laughs> Down on the scoreboard, had a drop. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Eli Apple. And his guys will take over at their own 44-yard line. Partner, we always talk about possessions being at a premium in these games. And now in this situation, throwing an interception here when you have to claw your way back in, that one's going to hurt and in a big way. They'll run on first down. Henry. And for one of the few times here today, this run's not going to go anywhere. Tackle made by Emerson Griffin. Again, it's Henry. And give him about five as he gets this up to the 48-yard line. An extra defender in the secondary for the Vikings here on third down. From the shotgun, Osweiler. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. Critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Here are the Vikings now to start their next drive. And last time, one play interception. So this offense, they should be fresh. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. And I can't wait to see when they decide to do a play call because a one-play drive where you throw an interception. A lot of people think the very next time out, run the football, don't give them a chance. Maybe play action? I think maybe you go play action, show your quarterback, get a little confidence in him, and let him fling another one. A full five-yard loss that time. It's going to make second down pretty tough. Looking to throw. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. And he'll get to the 29-yard line brought down there. They don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. They'll look to throw. And he's able to find Diggs. Stephon Diggs. 20, 10, touchdown, Vikings. Stephon Diggs, his first touchdown of the new season as his guys are back within a single score. Okay, game on. Don't go anywhere yet. You got a one-score game now. Probably going to rely on the onside kick coming up. Yeah, they have to. It's not a high percentage play, but it's better than not having a chance at all. And that's when you put your leapers and your flyers on one side, get that high hop, and hope that one of the guys can come up with it. And on the other side, get that hand steam ready. No doubt about it. The Packers offense now heading back out onto the field. And this game not quite over yet. And we'll likely see them take all three timeouts defensively, so they can't just kneel this one out. They're going to have to try to run a few plays. You're exactly right. They've got to get a first down and make them use up all their timeouts in order to feel like they have this one in hand. So second and nine, and you'd have to figure just about all 11 probably crashing the line here. Hey, Steve Stick, Steve Stick. Get him, get him, get him. Oh, Osweiler going to throw it. This one could play to Jordan Reed. And brought down, but not before reaching the 45-yard line. Now the 
Vikings will use the second of their timeouts. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. And not totally home free yet, but it's looking good as they come up first and ten. Now left side, a completion to his tight end. The Vikings going to use their third and final timeout as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Had the completed pass, but for no gain, stopped right at the line, so it's second and ten. Here's Osweiler. He's got his tight end, Jake Butt. And this is going to turn into another first down as the tackle is made at the Vikings 40. Throwing now is Osweiler. And Bryant's got it over the middle. And he's going to get this inside the 30. It'll go as a gain of 12, and that should just about wrap this one up. Now it's Osweiler. That's caught left side. It's Higby, the tight end. It's a gain of 14 there, and that should be enough to get him home free. These guys are running offense like you drive. The pedal is down. Stomp down. How about that? Back-to-back -back completions. They are rolling. So much for being conservative and running that football. On first down, it's Henry. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. Knocking it away there defensively, Justin Coleman. The Packers on third down. Well, they've converted seven times and could use another right now. This will be third and five. Hey, seven. Osweiler to throw. Flushed out right. And this is caught. And that could seal it. It's a touchdown. So a little icing on the cake there before the clock hits all zeros. What a way to finish things off. Exactly what you want. Not much time and a touchdown to put things away. Point after try, forthcoming. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. The kickoff unit is out on the field and they will send this one away. This is taken at his four. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The offense now at the line, ready for their next drive. This is just an exercise in futility. Do you, do you even bother running a play here offensively? I wouldn't, because now is not going to erase what's happened during the game. So, and this is intercepted, and that should do it. Picked off by the free safety, Eric Berry. And the return stops at the 39-yard line. But Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Why were they clicking on offense? They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feeling like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for the Packers, it's a win here in their home opener as they move to 2-0. And they'll get to stay home again next week. Meanwhile, for the Vikings, they'll fall to 1-1. One and, one, and they'll get a chance to redeem themselves at home next week. That'll do it for us. I'm Brandon Gordon, alongside Charles Davis. Thanks to our entire crew as well. We'll talk to you next time. So long, everybody.